Hello, welcome back to Cindy's Library. This is Cindy, and today I'm going to talk about what I have read for the first half of the month of June. That's right, it is June. So, I guess I should start out with what I have done for Ancient Sathan. So, I started out by listening to the Beowulf translation by Seamus Haney. I could swear it's not complete because there's one part I don't remember listening to that I know is in the book, but I could be wrong about that. But in any case, I am very glad to read this. Loved the translation, and the best part about doing the audio version was Seamus Haney himself. He read the book for the audio version, so that was wonderful. So, that was that. Haven't done anything else for Ancient Sathan, or rather haven't finished anything else for Ancient Sathan yet. I have been working on the Iliad. I am about two-thirds through. I have feelings. We'll have to see if they are the same by the end. But we'll save that for later when I actually have completed it. Then, I also read a book for a book group. And that was um, the... Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. So this is apparently a memoir of Jeanette growing up with her very eccentric family. And there are some positives to it, but a lot of negatives to it. Basically, Neither of her parents would take responsibility. Um, her mom didn't seem to want to act very much like a mom, but wanted to spend her time doing what she wanted, writing stories, painting, which might have been worth it if she'd ever sold anything, but she really didn't. And so, spending all this time doing other things. Uh, she had a teaching certificate. And she even taught a little bit, but hated it and got out of that as soon as she could. Her father, I've, there were some brilliant parts to him, but unfortunately he was also an alcoholic. So basically a dysfunctional family. There were a few themes that we came up with in book group. Um, one was being resourceful. Jeanette and her sisters and brother became very resourceful at finding ways to solve problems and finding ways to get what they needed. Another one was education. Um, the first two girls, Jeanette was the second girl, especially were quite bright. One positive thing that their parents did do for them was their mom was always going to the library bringing back books for herself and them, um, even reading to them when she was, when they were younger. So that was a good thing. Education made all of the difference for them. And then I do have to include forgiveness by the end, where Jeanette has come to have an understanding and accepting of her parents and her past. And doesn't he raise things, but does put things into perspective, I guess you could say. Uh, some people say, I've, well, I've heard some reviewers say that she put up 
or made things worse than they actually were. No idea whether that's true or not. What I do know is that everything in the book was way too plausible, unfortunately. So there is that. So after, well, I have been working on some other things, haven't finished them yet. So after the combination of the glass castle, which I did find interesting in the way you find watching a train crash happen interesting, I needed something very, very, very different. And so it was time to go back. <sighs> To our favorite bookworm, Ascendants of a Bookworm. Actually, ended up finishing part two, and so I can't say too much since that would be spoilers, but there are a couple things that I can say. Part two is even entitled Apprentice Shrine Maiden. And so it is exactly that. Our heroine, Mine, uh, she becomes an apprentice shrine maiden. Well, she did at the end of part one. And so here she is getting used to what that means in a practical fact. Um, of course, you know her, she's continuing her inventions either to uh, improve everything related to printing from paper to ink and the actual printing press and everything in between. So she makes progress on that. Her other inventions to improve life generally and to make money so she can work on what she really wants to do, which is to make a printing press and, of course, mass produce books. And of course, we meet some new friends. And without giving anything away about the ending, let's just say everything by the end is completely changed by these events at the very end. And so there is that. But it was just the tonic that I needed after uh, the glass castle and the Iliad. So, uh, who doesn't need a little biblio fantasy in their life? And I confess, I don't know if I will complete them but there's a good possibility that I will. And I have discovered two new manga series. Yep, you heard it right. After many years of not finding anything, I have been inspired. So the first is Snow White with the Red Hair by Sorata. Akiduki. So this features Shira Yuki. She is a herbalist. At least that's what she's training to be. But she is known for her unusually bright red hair. So much so that when the prince of her land decides he wants a girl, he decides to go after her. So what does Shira Yuki go do? She leaves that land. <clears throat> she runs into a guy and his two friends. The guy's name is Zen in the neighboring country. One thing leads to another. She ends up finding that Zen is actually the second prince of this new country. And basically, to show her thanks, she decides 
he wants to become court herbalist for him. But it's way more complicated than that. Very fun. I've been quite enjoying it so far, although I'm only two volumes in. So we will have to see how it goes. And then the other one I started was Chihara Furu. And yes, you are not imagining things. This is mostly the Japanese cover. Might even be Japanese style. Definitely has a Japanese marker in here. But this is actually produced by Kodansha. And Kodansha, well, they have an English base now. And they are actually releasing Kodansha, but digitally only in English. But the Japanese side of Kodansha, they released uh, some dual dual language versions. So the main part is in English, but as you can see here, you've got little Japanese on the sides. And so gorgeous art, gorgeous covers. It'd be wonderful if this is released fully in English. Kodansha in Japan only released three of these uh, dual language volumes for uh, Chihara Thuru. But what is this about? What it is about is a girl who is <laughs> uh, well her name is uh, I want to say her name is Chihaira. Yeah, Chihaira. Anyway, way back in sixth grade, um, there's a new boy named Arata who is getting teased and maybe even bullied a bit in class, and so she decides she's going to befriend him. Turns out that he is a karate prodigy. What is karate, you might ask? Excellent question. Karate is a game, mm, I suspect there may be, well, there are several ways to play it, but the main thing is you have a reader who starts reading one of, on the basic play, one of 100 poems, and you have various cards with the beginnings of those poems on them. And so uh, basically whoever gets a card that has the poem on it first gets that card and whoever gets more cards wins very simplified but that's what it boils down to so a little bit like a slapjack in the way it is played it can get pretty intense and physical and anyway arata he was taught kar uh, karuta by his grandfather is excellent at it. And so he inspires Chihaya to get into karate too, which at first makes her friend Tachi upset, but then he gets into karate as well. And they're able to play in an elementary level tournament before the end of the sixth grade year which is just as well because Tachi, uh, he got into an ex private, extremely prestigious middle school far away. He won't have time for a lot of karate and won't be at the same school 
as Chihaya. As for Arata, his grandfather's not doing well, and so his family has to move back to northern Japan, where they came from, to help look after him. And Chihaya's dream is to play karate with them again. Fast forward to the beginning of high school, because middle school was very much a drought, karate-wise, and Chihaya did not have either Arata or Tachi in her life, but she is determined to start a karate club in high school. Turns out that Tachi ends up going to her high school. So there is the first uh, part of Chihaya's dreams starting to come true, and they do indeed put together a karate club but very intense, and uh, meet lots of people, very interesting so far. And what makes it even more interesting is not the game, but the characters. Because, of course, it's not just Chihaya and Tachi and their karate club. And Arata, of course, has his own story going on at the same time. So loving, loving, loving it so far. I'm partly into volume four. The way I've been reading it <laughs> is if I want to read some, then I will work on whatever tournament they are in the middle of and get through that. And I might do some of the extra stuff on the either side, but uh, if there's a tournament coming up, then I'll pause there till I have the time to properly enjoy it. So that is what I have completed this month so far. Not entirely what I was expecting, but well. Let's just say I needed some, uh, nothing too serious or too hard after working on the Elliot and after the glass house. So I've been enjoying it. We'll have to see how far I get into both of these series, but so how has this meant? reading been for you so far. I hope you have been enjoying things. If you haven't been enjoying your reading, then uh, well, maybe it's time to take a bit of a break or maybe it is time to switch it up and read something entirely different or an old favorite. That can work too. So, thank you so much for stopping by. I truly do appreciate it. So, until next time, I hope we all stay safe and healthy, and as always, happy reading!